We're here today in the library at the IMECI and with me is Brigadier Lizzie Faithful Davis. Brigadier Lizzie is the first woman from the Corps of the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, or REMI, to command a brigade. Welcome, Brigadier Lizzie. I'd like to ask you first, as an engineer, what encouraged you to follow a career in the Army? Well, it was uh, actually the other way round. Uh, when I was at my sixth form college, my mathematics teacher was a, an ex-Royal Engineer Army officer. Uh, he knew I loved physics and mathematics, so he thought that I would be, uh, I should be looking at a career in engineering. But he also ran an Outward Bounds course at my college and knew that I loved the outdoors and sporting activities. So he was the one that suggested to me that I look at joining the Army. Uh, and having recommended joining the Army, uh, I then went to look at different engineering careers in the Army. I looked at the civil engineering, mechanical engineering, um, and I decided to do mechanical engineering on that basis. Tell me, Brigadier Lizzie, what does your current job involve? Oh, it's a, a really amazing role. Uh, I'm in command uh, of something called a logistic brigade. Uh, this particular one is 102 Logistic Brigade. Uh, and we're responsible for supporting the 1st United Kingdom Division, which is our uh, light forces capability that can deploy all over the world. Uh, my brigade, we have around 4,500 soldiers uh, that work within the brigade. Uh, we're spread geographically all across the UK, but we support the 1st Division both at home in the UK for routine training and in barracks support but also whenever we deploy overseas uh, I've got soldiers serving uh, alongside uh, so we have a multitude of roles that we deliver and the key areas that we support is logistics support which is uh, transport and supply uh, we also do uh, electrical and mechanical engineering support through the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers and our other branch is the uh, medical support to the division uh, which is our doctors and nurses uh, dentists etc that all uh, support uh, that the the physical and mental health of our soldiers within within the division. Uh, so my responsibilities as I've gained experience in the military have broadened from just engineering uh, but now to a much wider spectrum of specialist soldiers that, uh, that support the army uh, every day of the year. Could you pick out any particular career highlights for us? Oh, that's a tough question. There have been so many highlights in my career, and I think that's one of the joys of being in the Army. Uh, but I've served overseas uh, in many places, and those probably are professionally the most satisfying opportunities I've served in uh, Bosnia, Kosovo, uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. And there's a great story from when I was serving in Iraq, uh, and we were based in quite a remote location, uh, and the, uh, there was a lot of enemy threat around us, uh, and we needed to design a mine plow, uh, which could be attached to our armoured vehicles to clear the roads so that our troops could move around safely. Uh, and at the time we didn't have a mine plough in service, uh, so we were asked if we could design and manufacture a mine plough to be fitted to these vehicles. Uh, so I sat down with my, uh, my soldiers who are uh, engineering technicians and trained in, in, in all of these skills. So we designed from first principles uh, a mine plough that could be attached to the vehicle that wasn't going to damage the vehicle as well. Uh, and then they manufactured it, our, my metal smiths then manufactured these mine ploughs as a prototype. We fitted them to the warrior armoured vehicle and then they were used for a, a number of months in service clearing the roads so that our troops could move around safely before the commercial solution uh, was shipped out to Iraq. The proportion of women in the British Army and in the REMI is relatively low. Do you see yourself as a role model? Yes, you, you are right. There is a relatively small proportion of us in the British Army that are women and, and even less that have gone into the, the engineering roles. Um, but as to, for being a role model, I think we, we're really lucky in, in the British Army. We've got lots of amazing women role models uh, of all ages, all ranks. And, and I think that's what's so important is there is something for the new generation coming through to join the Army that can see the opportunities they have that they can relate to at their level. So I think from uh, for, as me as a role model, um, I, I think... Uh, by virtue of having had the opportunities to get to where, where I am, it, it highlights to our next generation of, of really what they can achieve, that all of those doors are open to them if they work hard and they're good at what they do uh, and, and they apply themselves, then they can reach you know, the highest ranks and have these amazing opportunities such as command of a brigade. That's very interesting. Um, if we're thinking about engineering roles in the um, army, what kind of opportunities would you say there are for somebody considering that career? 
There are lots of opportunities, uh, actually, for engineering in the British Army. There are two very obvious choices, um, but there are also lots of other hidden choices. Uh, so, again, uh, you know, young engineers shouldn't be, feel they're constrained in the opportunities that are open to them. So we have the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers, which is the core that uh, I, I joined and, and trained with, which, as the title suggests, is electrical and mechanical engineering. But they also do avionics and aviation air, uh, engineering in support of the helicopter fleet as well. We have our our, uh, branch called the Royal Engineers and they do our civil engineering, the construction, they do combat engineering as we call it, uh, building of bridges and then the construction tasks overseas. Uh, and then we also have uh, some of our more specialist branches like the Royal Signals, uh, again, who will uh, you know, a really valuable communication engineer uh, employment as well. So there's lots of hidden trades out there that are suited for engineers. And the best way to find out about them is to go and look on at the Army's website uh, and look for engineering roles. And there's, there's fantastic opportunities out there. Thank you. What would you say to a young person generally considering a career in engineering? Go for it. Uh, it's, it's such a diverse career and there are so many different things you can do with it. Uh, and it's just because it has a title of being a mechanical engineer or a civil engineer or a chemical engineer or aeronautics engineer, there is so much within that. and There's such a crossover of skills that lots of opportunities are open to you. I think anyone who has a mathematical brain, an applied mathematics brain that, that wants to understand how things work, um, then they, they really must go after a career in engineering because it's interesting, it's fun. Uh, we have brains that work in a certain way, we like to solve problems and, and work our way through to solutions. And then there's the opportunity to manufacture and design new things. And then there's also an amazing stream in terms of engineering management as well. And certainly that's where my role has ended up being, where I'm responsible um, and in command of soldiers who are spe specialist engineering technicians, uh, who have a huge breadth of careers, uh, that you, you get to know the skills that they have and you're very reliant on them teaching you their skills. So I think engineering is so diverse, so broad, uh, that we, we must encourage more young people to come and be engineers. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Brigadier Lizzie. It was a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. It's been really lovely to be here today.